guys from KISS. Let's check in with Ricky right now. Thanks. I'm hanging with probably one of the most influential bands in hard rock, KISS. And uh, you guys have got a new album coming out soon. We got Revenge. We got, finally we have Revenge, Ultimate Revenge, which is a killer album. And that's the ultimate revenge. And we've been hearing or seeing the video for Unholy on MTV quite a bit. And it's definitely got something reminiscent of that old heavy Kiss sound. I mean, would you agree? Yeah, I guess so. But nobody sat down and tried to figure out what to do. I think uh, if the video and the song comes off sounding the way it does, it's because that's what we feel like today. We're hungry. Uh -huh. And you also have a new member of the band. Yeah, Eric Singer's been with us. Um, I guess he did the whole album with us, and he came in really to help out during a real tough time for us. And it was really a period where he was just in there to help, and it turned into something else, and out of something really terrible, we're, we're kind of blessed. He's, mm -hmm. he's very, very cool. It's got to be great being a member now of KISS. Yeah, it's, uh, everything's working out great so far. Now, now, I had a good time, and they, uh, they're treating me right, and uh, <laughs> we just did our first show the other night, and... Uh, no complaints. No complaints yet. I'm, <laughs> just, I'm still playing drums tonight, so I guess I'm okay. <laughs> now, something that you guys are doing right now that's pretty interesting is you're at the Troubadour in L.A., which has got a capacity of about 300. It has I mean, less tonight. Once we got all the amps, and they just told us it's 100 less, but it's a great way to really get to know and spend a little bit of time with our fans, you know. When you do these listening parties, I don't know about the people who are watching, if they know when albums come out, a lot of people do these listening parties where they get together with the record company, radio stations, and it's kind of like a big pat on the back to say, will you play my record and will you buy my record? We didn't want to do that. We want a listening party for the listeners. Since the people who are here tonight are the real listeners, those are the people we want to celebrate with. And if you want to find out much more about KISS, watch a Headbangers Ball this Saturday night because we'll be with them the entire night at the Troubadour. Watch Soundcheck, maybe watch a little bit of live stuff. So watch Headbangers Ball this Saturday. Back to you guys. All right, thank Like I said, this is one of those shows you're definitely going to want to videotape. We're spending the evening with Kiss. And of course, right here, Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley. What's up? The ceiling, otherwise. Last time we hooked up with you guys, you were playing the uh, first show of your last tour in Lubbock, Texas. Yeah, we remember that. And, and that was a big was arena fun. thing. But that was like uh, two and a half years ago. And this uh -huh. time we decided to start even bigger and start at the Troubadour right here in Los Angeles, California. Paul Stanley. Which, for those of you that don't know, has like a capacity of... 400. It's, it's about the usual dressing room in an arena, but this is how you get to know who your friends are. Is there a reason that you decided to go back to the clubs before you hit the arenas? Well, we're, we're not going to really tour before August, and we're feeling so good about the album, and the band is really smoking, so, so to speak, and uh, it just seems like a great thing to go out and let the diehard fans, the ones who are willing to sleep out or do whatever they have to to get tickets, get a chance to see something, and we owe them a lot, so this is our way of thanking them for uh, their support, and I think this album is the best present that we could give them. Yeah, and we were out in the streets a little bit earlier, and these people that have been staying overnight, I mean, they are the diehard KISS fans. They've got all the KISS license plates and everything, so it's going to be a fun show. People shouldn't mistake this uh, for anything than what it is. Uh, record company thinks we're out of our minds for doing this stuff, because the record's not coming out for a couple weeks. But we just decided we had a choice of either rehearsing in a loft and playing ourselves or having a listening party for ourselves and our fans. So the real tour, the world tour, is going to start mm -hmm. August 1 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so the, you know, the big show, the uh, live sacrifices and all the rest of that stuff will happen starting August. <laughs> Paul's going, which I'm, tour are you going to be in? I don't know what Gene took this morning, <laughs> but obviously it's giving him motor mouth. <laughs> we'll be back with Kiss from the Troubadour in L.A., but right now here's... Wait, we've got the top four videos on Countdown to the Ball here, of course, with... Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley, and you talking about doing this little club tour. I mean, how many cities were involved in this? We're playing 12, I'd say either 12 or 13 cities, and we'd love to be able to hit all, you know, these little clubs coast to coast, but we can only do this many. But, um, you know, most of the time when a band has an album coming out, they do these listening parties where they get to brown nose the record company and the radio stations and all that stuff and magazines and the truth is the only people that don't make it to the listening party are the listeners mm -hmm. so this is a real listening party this is where the people who decide whether something's good or not get a chance to really get close to you now this is only your second club night so far right yeah the first one was in the stone in san francisco where 
I don't, I've never been in it. I didn't, never even heard of it. And it was, I don't know, it must have been 100 degrees, and it was like packed sardines. It's wild to look out in the awesome. audience yeah. and you see steam rising off it everybody. It was like so Sweatville. Gives a new definition to the word hot, but it, it was really great. And, and with that generous. in mind, it's only 10 days to revenge. Uh huh. Now, 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 Kiss has always had, I want to talk about the new album in a little bit. First, we're going to play some videos. We'll come back. We'll talk about the new albums, more about the two, everything. Don't go away. Top four videos are on the way. Well, back on Countdown to the Ball here with Paul Stanley, and you're about to introduce the new Kiss drummer. Actually, everybody should know this guy because... Um, He's like the hired gun that everybody wishes would be in their band, but he's always said no, and he certainly deserves to be with us. Eric Singer sitting over there. Now, Eric, we spoke to you at the Shoreline Amphitheater a while back when you were playing drums with Alice Cooper. Right. Now, this must be amazing. I mean, you're getting to play drums with the best bands in the world. Uh, and now you're with Kiss. Now I'm in the best band. I was in some good bands, but now I'm in the best band. Okay. So, so I guess you feel pretty good about it. I'll now. give you the $5 later. <laughs> you so this, this must be great. I mean, now you're drumming with Kiss. Yeah, it's great. It's really great. And did, I mean, you, like, did you know most of the songs? I said, okay, let's play some of this. And like, like, it wasn't like you had to sit in the stereo and remember how it goes. You probably knew most of these songs already. Yeah, I, well, I was aware of all the songs. But plus, I worked with Paul before on his uh, solo tour in 89. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm kind of a alumni, alumnus in the Kiss family. Yeah, he's been like... He's been like part of the family, so it wasn't like, you know, we had to go through that kind of stuff of going through 50 people and trying to find somebody and then finding out what a jerk they are. We know what he is already. Yeah. And <laughs> they knew I was cool. a jerk, right? <laughs> and what's even more interesting is we found out that Eric Singer is actually a singer because he's singing, you know, he's doing, he's doing pretty remarkable. Are you going to be singing on the Kiss tour? Oh, yeah. Check it out later. You'll see me. I, I do I do back vocals on all the songs except for, well, put it this way, 20 out of 23 songs, so I'm basically singing all night long. Great. Not as much as him, but... No, he's giving me a run for my okay. money. Well, it's a special edition of the Headbangers Ball, and right now, it's still Countdown to the Ball, and we'll be back with Kiss. Here is video... Evening at the Troubadour in Los Angeles, California with Kiss. You know, it's really amazing. I don't mean to interrupt you or anything. Oh, go right ahead. Through democracy and through phone calls and things like that, people can actually see what they want to see on MTV. And if you want the number one video to be unholy, all you have to do is pick up your phones and demand it. And lo and behold, on Headbangers Ball, you will have the number one right. video, and it'll be the one that you really want to see, because we know you really want to see Unholy. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the song, Unholy. When I first heard it, I, it definitely felt like a lot of the heavier, old, classic Kiss songs, which is, which is great. I mean, that's a definite compliment. It's a great song. Well, the whole album is really, really exciting. I mean, revenge is, is really revenge. I mean, maybe we didn't realize it, but maybe we fell asleep for a little while. And we just woke up and said, if we've been dozing, and we said, well, if we've been dozing, we got to make up for some lost time. And I think revenge is what that's all about. So would you say that some of the material on the new album has the feel of a lot of the classic Kiss cuts? Well, that's what everybody's saying, but I think it's a lot heavier. And I think the songwriting's better. And the musicianship is like way beyond anything we used to do. I mean. You know, Bruce is playing unrecognizably. I mean, he's playing like an animal. It's as though he finally realized that rock and roll starts somewhere below your belt instead of in your brain. And um, Eric's been playing a storm up, and Gene's doing a great job, and uh, I'm holding my own. And you also worked with Bob Ezrin, who worked on Destroyer with you. Well, Bob did Destroyer, and he's done a lot of classic stuff, and I think the, the chemistry was great, and, you know, the music does the talking. We can sit here all day and... and you know, schmooze and, and fast talk, but the truth is, when you put it on, you know it. Great. Special edition of the Headbangers Ball tonight, hanging out with Kiss. Stay tuned, the number one video is next. It's still Countdown to the Ball. Remember, at midnight, the Headbangers Ball kicks in, and we'll be hanging out at the Troubadour with Kiss. Now, we're talking a little bit about the new album, which is titled Revenge. Comes out... May 19th, so that's uh, it's like 10 days left to Christmas. Exactly. Oh, so it's a, a little, real, real early present. The best come early. Sometimes. Now, we've heard Unholy. We've seen the video on the ball. Now, tell us about some of the other tracks that are on the album. There's so many good tunes. You know, we tried to make an album this time where basically any song on the album could start it. So there's a song, Heart of Chrome, uh, Spit, um, I Just Wanna, which is getting airplay, um, Domino, uh, Tough Love. It's 
it's very cool. I mean, I can sit here, you know, Eric may not not have the words to say right now, or he doesn't want to step I'm on my words. He's actually. speechless, Okay, now you, Eric, talk you can about sort of album. also stand on the outside and look in as being a longtime KISS fan. I mean, what is your impression on some of the stuff on the new album? Well, I think it's kind of a, a nice combination of covering the whole spectrum of KISS. I mean, there, to me, when I hear the songs, there's stuff that reminds me of uh, the stuff from the first record, and even things as, um, as late as the most recent record. So it kind of covers a whole spectrum of things, and it you know, retains a lot of the traditional side of uh, KISS, but also it moves into the 90s. You know, there's a lot of uh, freshness there. I think one thing we were all excited about was when Bob Ezrin went up to Toronto, he was going through the tape vaults and he found an old tape that we had recorded in 1981 for a song that never made it onto an album with Eric Carr. And it's um, something that he wrote and um, we're using it on the album to close the album. It's his only drum solo that we have from a it's studio called cut. Car it's called Car Jam. Bruce put his guitar part on, and after an album that we feel as good about as this one, and we're moving into the future, we really have to thank somebody who was a big part of the past. Very cool. We're going to be back talking to Kiss throughout the entire evening. Check out, I know you guys got to go sound check. We'll let you we're go. We're going to get ready. And we'll talk to a Gene in a little bit. And right now, here is the number one video on Countdown to the Ball. Countdown to the Ball, and right now it's time for the Headbangers Ball with Kiss. It's the Headbangers Ball here with Gene and Bruce of the band KISS, if you probably hadn't figured out. Now, we were talking to Paul a little bit earlier about the new record. Was there anything that you did on this record said, okay, let's just do this like we used to do a long time ago and not do this like we've been doing lately? Not to put down any of the, the newer stuff. To, you don't have to. We'll put it down first. I think we got to come clean. We had to come clean a while back with ourselves and our fans if we were going to do anything brand new. I think at some point during the last tour, we had to admit to ourselves that some of those records were pop crap. I, I in particular, was lost like in pop hell, and I was seduced. I, I became a corporate whore and started to listen to people who have no business telling anybody anything. And the one thing we all decided to do with this record is, one, in essence, in the very nicest way, told record companies and radio stations that they could go jump if they didn't like the record. We could have been. We could have just as easily have called the record "Kiss My Ass." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think the record shows what the band is really like today. Now, without any outside influences, without worrying about what a guy with a suit and tie is thinking about in back of a chair. And Bruce Kulick was over there. Hey, that is I, Howard. <laughs> in particular, showed us the true size of his eyes. <laughs> hit the very hot all. Come on now. No, for us, this was a real focus of guitars. I mean, Kiss's guitars. Loud amps, big guitars, and this record really shows that. We got guitars from hell on this record, mm -hmm. and they, they, you know, I went through a lot of torture to get it, get my solos to really rock, but I'm, I'm real proud of this album. I think it's a, it's, it really represents Kiss in 1992, Good. and there's more chapters to be written about this band yet. Yes. If there, if there was one word that you could say to sum up Kiss in 1992, what would that word be? Well, revenge is one. There you go. This is our revenge. Okay, right now, let's play a video. Definitely ultimate classic Kiss. Remember, not to date myself, but when I went to school, this was like the song. Sure, for all of it. This is Kiss, rock and roll all night. Kiss is. Spending an intimate evening with Kiss, quite different from last time, which was the starting of your big tour. We were That's in true. Lubbock, Texas. That's right, a couple of years ago, actually. Uh -huh, two and years we, were, we were showing you the big stage. In fact, that stage. The big Sphinx. Leon. Big, Leon. Leon. <laughs> in fact, we're taking that uh, show over to England just for 10 shows before the real world tour starts in Tulsa, Oklahoma, August 1. Be there or be square. I could be wrong, but I heard that there was a rule or a law that overseas you couldn't use pyrotechnics. Is that that's one of the, That's one of the reasons why we didn't take a lot of the uh, older shows, older tours through Europe, because the fire marshals gave us a hard time. They have come in line, mm -hmm. I would say. There so it will be the, the kiss show that you Oh, would yeah. It'll, we will blow up the stage, and any fat girl within a thousand yards of the stage is going to lose a couple of pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the video in Holy. And did you enjoy making the video? That was great. You know, we worked with this new guy, Paul Rackman, I think his name is. No relation. <laughs> That's right. Very close. Exactly. But, uh, and he just, uh, I know he's worked with Pantera and some bands of that sort, and uh, he gave us a little edge, but the song Unholy, how much heavier can you, exactly. can you be for us? So it really it was a good marriage. 
We okay. have fun. Now, actually, actually this is a good, a good lead-in, because we understand you're going to be playing Pantera in a second, but mm. I was going to say that we went to see the guys recently at one of their shows, and then we started to see pictures of the guys dressed up in Kiss makeup doing some of their some of their versions of our They songs. did that. You know yeah. what? I remembered that. When we hooked up with uh, Pantera, when they were opening up for Skid Row, they were telling us that they were doing like little Kiss tributes, sort of. And uh, we went to see them. We were knocked out live. And we were kind of curious what they looked like on video. So we saw this video and we said, wow, this is cool. There are close-ups of the guy's arm. And it wasn't just like posing and right. you know, kissing the camera all the time which is why we use the sky. We like the Pantera video, we like the look of it. Good stuff. Let's play it. Here's Pantera, our mouth for war. It's the Headbangers Ball. We're hanging out with Kiss, and we're at the Troubadour, a small club. Kiss is playing a small small club tour. I mean, small, small. We could have, we could set up our dinner table and it would be enough just for everybody to sit around. <laughs> That's got to be kind of wild to tone yourself down. I mean, not volume-wise, but taking the KISS show, which is usually so elaborate, and bringing it onto such a small stage. The idea was really a simple one. We could have just stayed in our loft and played and rehearsed the show. We could have done the, uh, let's play the new record in a kind of a you know, the, the nuts and the hors d'oeuvres kind of mm -hmm. routine where everybody's trying to figure out who they were with last night, biblically speaking. And we figured that's a lot of bull. The best way to do it is to play live in front of our fans and have like live listening parties and so that we can get off on it too instead of shaking hands and, and trying to remember names you don't care about the next day. So this is really for us and the fans. Now how long shows are you playing in the clubs? We got 22 songs, so it's like almost two hours of music. We, we're kicking can ask. How many of these songs are new Kiss songs? We got three new ones um, from the new record, Unholy, Take It Off, and God Gave Rock and Roll, which is on the new record. And there's a couple of new old ones, so oh. they're kind of new. Which, which old ones, Bruce? Uh, Parasite, which has got a great riff, the one that Anthrax has Yeah, what done. do you think about that? <laughs> See, we were so knocked out by, by this song that Anthrax recorded, we decided to do like our tribute to Anthrax and record a song that they recorded. So we decided to record a song that Anthrax recorded called Parasite. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it before then. Yeah, we, we, we do like our version of their version doing our oh, version. Right. And, and will we hear that tonight? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. we'll be playing oh, that. Oh great. Well right now let's play the video, the new song by Kiss, which if you're a Kiss fan, doesn't matter when you became a Kiss fan, you're going to love this song. I like it so we lot. This is Unholy from Kiss. from Kiss, a song that you're singing on? Yeah. I, w I wouldn't consider it singing, but yeah, I'm the guy kind of leering at the camera, kind of like I'm doing this. Doing the mean gene <laughs> kind of thing? Actually, it was really cool. We There were some uh, kids on the on the set, these uh, little guys, and the parents got a little nervous because then they started to read the lyrics. I am the incubus. <laughs> I lay the egg in you. The worm that burrows through your brain. Tommy, we're going home. You know, I was like, a couple of them left, but the ones that stayed, the few, the proud, like the Marines. The Kiss fans. Those are the ones that survived. Real quick, I know you guys have got to get a sound check. Yeah. Tell me about the bet you have going on. I didn't, I have nothing to do with this. The, uh, all the guys are saying, ah, so <laughs> his mouth in his, in his tongue. That tongue. That's, that's, his which tongue is harder to mouth. do, yeah. <laughs> Simmons can't keep his tongue in his mouth. It's just the Anyway, oh. <laughs> so uh, tongue in cheek comment, get it? Mm -hmm. So they have a bet going that uh, I can't do a show without sticking my tongue out. So I guess I owe the band a hundred bucks because we've only only played one show, and I was aware the whole night that my tongue was inside my mouth. But apparently somebody came over and said, "What that? What's that thing? What do you what, what do you got a tie in your mouth? Get that thing." So. And what about what about tonight? You got that bet going on tonight? Uh, it's supposed to be every night. It's like that so James. We'll Brown be watching. Yeah. We'll be watching. And we'll let you get a sound check, and we're going to even watch a little bit of the sound check. Keep on watching the Headbangers Ball coming to you from the Kiss Show in L.A. You, the Headbangers Ball viewer, are watching Ricky Rackman in a moment that I will never forget ever in my whole life. I'm standing on stage, and right there is Kiss sound checking. Very cool and very loud. Hey, it's Triple Thrash Threat time right now. How appropriate. Tonight in Triple Thrash's threat is Napalm Death, but right now, here is Slayer with Raining Blood. 
some wild locations, jumping out of airplanes, Japan, Brazil, but it's really hard for me to remember anything that was as cool as being on stage while Kiss is sound checking. This close to Kiss. How close that I'm even in the way. I'm even in the way. That's how close I am right now. We're going to watch Kiss. We're doing some live stuff in a little bit, so keep on watching as the Headbangers Ball continues. Ladies and gentlemen, a Kodak moment. Me, Paul Stanley. Paul Stanley's guitar. You know, it's very, very loud. What? I said it's very loud. Thank you. I mean, the speakers take up about half the club. Thank you, we're on. Would you have it another way? No, it's our way or the highway. Okay, stick around. Headbangers Ball coming to you from the Troubadour. What? I said Headbangers Ball coming to you from the Troubadour with Kiss. Thank you. sound checking in the background we had to come up here to do this segment because you would not be able to hear us down there and i'm losing my voice screaming anyways you might remember the like california where kiss is about to take the stage keep on watching you're going to see more really cool stuff for those of you that love it loud and it's loud everything that rock and roll should be check out some more kiss live on stage
Well, the show just ended. My my voice is sore from like being back there singing. I it was singing all the way from where we were. We could see. Oh, I'm back. sorry. Ricky was singing back vocals tonight for us. Thanks. It, it was a great show. I mean, what was it like playing back in a small club? It's really weird. It almost feels like internal combustion. Like everything's about to like explode. At like any second, the walls are gonna go. It's real weird because we're hearing all that power coming right back at us, and and the fans are just great. It makes, well, you know, it, nobody sees this. Every once in a while, when the lights go out, I kind of go. Oh. Oh, God, I love these guys. What? I can't catch my breath. <laughs> the one thing I want to say real quick about KISS fans that I've noticed from being a KISS fan a long time ago is that as a band sometimes plays years and years and years, their fans get older, but you've always got the young fans at KISS shows, always the young crazy we rockers. Wanna, we don't want to lose anybody. If somebody grows up or thinks that they're too old, you know, or whatever, then it was nice knowing you, but um, you're all invited, everybody. You had a good time? Oh, yeah, great. It was I, nice watching a new member. I mean, you were, you were smoking back there. I, I had a workout. I'm, like, uh, very exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Any comment? Hey, he was, he was a powerhouse. It's really nice to turn around and see Eric, you know, just working his butt off. It makes you, it makes you think, hey, I better get into overdrive. This guy is working his butt off, and I can't, you know, there's no cruising. And real quick, you see Eric, boom, 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 boom. Hey, I, well, they brought me here to kick their asses and drive them through the brick wall, so I'm trying to do it. Went right begging over. for mercy and he gives us none so that's what he's supposed to be doing now real quick again when's the new album coming out may 19th. may 19th revenge revenge is sweet but brutal and the tour begins the tour begins the end of july early august tulsa oklahoma july 31st tulsa oklahoma and you don't want to miss it thanks again for for letting me introduce you right. too it was fun we had a good time we'll be back oh but right now we're gonna play a video see i was like so about the whole thing. This is great. This is a song that you guys sounded great doing live. It was fun. I never saw it you do it in the club, so it was fun. You want to intro it for it? Hey, yeah! That's how it goes. It's, I love it loud. Turn it up. Well, if I look a little bit disheveled to you right now, it's because I am. Tonight's show was amazing. I'm glad that you could share this special moment with us. And of course, I want to thank the guys from KISS and everybody that helped us do this show. Now, I'd fish in the gold. Good night.